quick poll. Who here remembers when Java promised us build once, run anywhere? <laughs> Got a couple of few. And who remembers when we actually accomplished that? Now, WebAssembly is helping developers realize that vision. Today, we are going to talk about one language in particular, everybody's favorite language, Go. In the next 30 minutes, we'll explore how Go has embraced WebAssembly to enable building truly portable applications while maintaining Go's pragmatic developer experience that has made Go loved by developers worldwide. Let's see how can we make Go go anywhere. My name is Joe. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft Azure, and I build open source software. I'm a proud maintainer of CNCF Container D Run YZ project, SpinCube, and I'm a recognized contributor in the Bycode Alliance. I co organized the Bycode Alliance Gas Language Special Interest Group, Go Subgroup, with Damien. And you can reach out to me on GitHub or on X. Thanks, Joe. Hi, I'm Randy. I work at Fastly. I look after our technology research and incubation teams, and I work with Damien pretty closely, actually every day. Um, I'm an open source maintainer. Uh, I'm a contributor to Go and TinyGo, um, amongst a bunch of other open source projects. Um, I'm a Bytecode Byte Alliance contributor and uh, part of the Go WebAssembly uh, maintainers group. Um, you can find me on all the social media and GitHub. So. Where we're going today. First, we're going to start with a short history of WebAssembly in Go. Um, then we're going to talk about where we are today, which is with the component model and WASI Preview 2. Um, and we're going to talk about how we build TinyGo with WIT BindGen Go and WASM WASI P2. Then we're going to show it in action, we'll do some demos. And then we're going to talk about what's next for the future of Go, WebAssembly, and WASI. All right. Go was one of the first few programming languages that embraced WebAssembly as first-class compilation target. Back in 2018, Go 1.11 was released with WebAssembly support, targeting modern browsers. It's introduced system call JS package for JavaScript interoperate, and a new build target, Go OS equal to JS and Go R equal to WASM. And notably, Go programs compiled for WebAssembly supported almost all of the features that people love about Go. For example, Go routines, channels, and the low cost uh, concurrency. And all these features were loved by developers, and this, this was helped in part because Go's runtime and Go standard library was all written in Go. Developers on any existing platforms, Linux, Windows, or Mac OS, could cross-compile programs for WebAssembly just as easy as for other architecture and open systems. This build target allows Go developers to interact with DOM using Go code, access JavaScript APIs like Fetch, and port existing Go libraries into the web. And the impact was immediate. Go developers began porting Go applications to the browser, including data processing tools, games, and progressive web apps. Now, five years later, in 2023, Go 1.21 was released with support for WebAssembly outside of the browser. It was built on WASI, or WebAssembly System Interface. The first public release of WASI was referred as WASI Preview 1 or WASI P1. Go's native WASI support demonstrated the relevance of WebAssembly on non-browser applications. Go 1.21 added a new build target, the uh, Go OS equal to YZ P1. It also added a compiler directive, Wasn, uh, Go Wasn import, that enables safe, idiomatic, and performance YZ P1 system calls for Go APIs to, uh, from the guest to the host. And this directive becomes the bridge between your Go programs and the host and it's not limited just to the Go Center library. This produced a 
wasn't binary that can work across Watson time, Watson zero, Watson edge, Watson mer, Wimer, and Node.js. There are some notable limitations for this build target. For one, Watson architecture is single-threaded, and which means that a host function invocation will block all the Go routines until the host function returns. And the second limitation is that there is no network socket APIs being defined in YZ preview work. So NAT HTTP package in Go standard library will not work in this build target. Um, with the exception where you can find the, Go, there's an open source project called YZ Go where they implement Watson time, Watson edge compatible sockets APIs you can use. As the use of WebAssembly evolved beyond the initial browser use cases, the need for a high level type system and a composable model become clear. And this is where we enter the Watson component model. And you've probably heard about it in the keynotes. The Watson component model gives a new set of standards building upon the Watson core specification. It has a canonical ABI and it has an interface description language called WEED, and they're used for composing WebAssembly modules. WEED allows different Wasm components to interoperate, even if those components are compiled from different programming languages, it provides high-level types, such as string, record, variant, option, result. The concept of the world is central to the component model. A world is a contract between the component or the guest to the runtime or the host. This allows for well-defined composable interface between different parts of your application. The next major version of YZ is called YZ Preview 2 and it was released early this year. It is a completely new implementation based on weight and the component model. YZ Preview comes with two standardized worlds. YZ CLI and YZ HTTP. YZ CLI defines a standardized CLI interface for your applications, and YZ HTTP provides a more like a YZ proxy interface. Looking forward, the YZ roadmap includes plans for even more ambitious features. YZ Preview 3 will come with async and streams. They will enable non-blocking I.O. and improved concurrency support. So last year, we started looking at what it would take to bring WASI Preview 2 and the component model to Go. And I started working with Joe, or we started working together, and it turns out that all of the tooling for WASI and the component model was written in Rust. And up until last year, I had never written a line of Rust. And Joe made a really great suggestion, which is what if we could write the tooling in Go and we could build a bridge between the Rust tooling and the Go tooling. And so what we came up with was a command line tool written in Go called WitBindGenGo. And simple tool, it generates Go from Wit. So how many of you guys have worked with like Proto-C and Proto-Protobufs? Same deal. Um, compiles Go from Wit um, and attempts to generate familiar ergonomic uh, Go that should be comfortable and something that any Go developer can easily reach for and understand um, you know, with certain limitations. Uh, it's built on some internal packages that, uh, that any developer can use and build on top of, WIT and WIT BindGen. Um, and it still depends on the Rust component model toolchain built into WASM tools. So here's a demo. So the top in white is WIT. This is a subset of a pretty common standard interface uh, defined in WIT that defines an interface for getting environment variables from the environment. It is a subset and is part of the WASI CLI world. Um, this is something that POSIX programs expect. And below in green is the Go code that WITBindGenGo generated from that. Uh, WITBindGenGo can incorporate all of the types, documentation, comments, interfaces, and worlds both imported and exported from WIT and translate them into natural, easy to use Go APIs. And you can see here, it uses the WASM import directive to call uh, the host with a mangled name. 
Um, and then there's right above it is the nice familiar looking Go version of the function, which is capital G get environment, um, and then it returns something called a result, uh, well, which, is a, which is a list in this case, which is the wit equivalent of a slice. So that list type is found in package CM. In package CM, one of, one of the things we, we wanted to do with this tooling was move as much of the code as possible to standard pre-written testable libraries. And we centered around one, one key package called package CM for a component model. And this implements the core primitives in the component model, such as option, result, um, variants, lists, and tuples in nice type safe, in a nice type safe manner using generics, uh, a little bit of unsafe under the hood to make the ABI work, but ultimately developers using this never have to touch unsafe directly. Um, and it maps like common component model types and concepts used in WIT one-to-one -one where Go is possible. And so things like WIT string, which is a pointer and a length, turns out that's exactly the same as a Go string. And so Go strings are handled natively at the function level and at the ABI level in the component model. Uh, things like the lists translate neatly into slices. And so with a little bit of syntactic sugar, a uh, Go programmer can use the types in package CM just as easily as they can use any normal Go types. In addition, it handles all of the heavy lifting or lowering um, across the ABI boundary. Uh, so how do we get to use this in practice? So my colleague Damien and I, along with Joe's help and a bunch of other people who have been working on WebAssembly and Go, decided that we wanted to implement WASI Preview 2 in Go. But the first place we started was TinyGo. Smaller code base, a little bit more flexible, an easier place to experiment. And in fact, TinyGo actually predated Go in terms of supporting WebAssembly. And it has sort of historically acted as a, uh, as a front runner um, and sort of leading the way in adopting sort of new technologies, especially in WebAssembly. And so, Damien had a great idea, which is let's implement libc in Go. And he wrote it, and it sits on top of code generated by Witbindgen Go. And so you have Go calling into C, and you have Go that's pretending to be C that's calling component model APIs. And so what this enables is any Go programmer can take an existing CLI program and run it with target dash target equals wazi p2 and runs completely unchanged. And they can do that today using uh, TinyGo like 0 0.33 or later. And so this built, all of this work that we did was built into the runtime, package syscall uh, and other things. And um, sort of the next step is sockets and network support. Um, and then we're gonna try to use all of this work that we've learned and, and this sort of path that we've paved and apply this to, to big go. So the next thing we said was, well, let's try to support the WASI HTTP world. And WASI HTTP, as, as Joe mentioned, is a, is a proxy. It, it allows a program to accept HTTP requests and then make HTTP requests. And it's a simplified you know, version of a set of common APIs used and sort of pro, uh, originally pioneered with, um, let's say, with WASI, uh, sorry, proxy WASM. Um, and so what we built is a prototype called WASI HTTP Go, which puts standard Go net HTTP package interfaces on top of WASI HTTP and allows a Go programmer familiar with Go's HTTP package to write WASM, WASI HTTP programs and change only one line of code. So this is a, about the simplest sort of hello world you can have for WASI HTTP in Go. You import the one line of code, which is import WASI HTTP. It overrides a couple of things in the net HTTP package. You set up some handlers, and then your program is called automatically when it receives a request um, by the WASI HTTP runtime. We're gonna do a, a, an interesting demo 
kind of showing how this works. Another interesting example of, of what this enables is developers are using WIT and parts of the component model today without using the full component model. We think this is really interesting because WIT is in some ways one of the most powerful aspects um, and features of the component model. It allows developers to define an API and the ABI um, for, for their programs in a type safe, like with rich, like in a type safe interfaces. And there's a, another developer who's actually a contributor to TinyGo that built WebAssembly bindings for OpenCV, allows computer vision programs to be run in an untrusted, um, or run untrusted computer programs in a embedded environment right next to a frame buffer, right next to a sensor, like out in the field. And he's using WIT and WebAssembly uh, to define that today. So this is what a Go program using WASM CV looks like today. It just uses the normal um, generated code from WITBind Gen Go. A customer can, or a user can process like images directly and then return the image after processing. All right, we're gonna do some, uh, some code demos. Yeah, everybody's mostly excited about demos. All right. Yep, you're good. Cool. Um, so the first time I want to show you. Oh yeah. Your hands. Better. Great. Thank so you. the first demo I want to show you is a Go program that compiles to YCP one and compiles to YCP two, and it can compile from the Go compiler or TinyGo compiler, and we'll show you it works for those targets. And this Go program is the Wait Banjan Go tool Randy just mentioned. So let's try run this one first. And Wait Banjan Go has a subcommand called Wait, and this Wait command will turn a in JSON encoding of the Wait file back to wait file. So I'm going to demonstrate with this subcommand. Records. Okay. So this is running the wait bungeon in the native code. We we just ran go wrong, wait bungeon go and it turns this JSON file back to the wait package. This is expected. Now, let's run this in Go YZP1. So you can specify Goose as YZP1 and Go Arc as WASM, and you just run the same code. And boom. So, this is compiling the WebEngine Go program into YZP1 module and runs in a WASM runtime. And it, it shows that the WASM P1 file, file system access was used and it was able to print to the send out in the terminal. Now let's go tiny into tiny Go. We can do the same thing with tiny Go build run, actually, target YZP1. Just gonna copy this. And this is just running Wait Bungeon Go, compiling that to YZP1 again, but using another compiler. And slower, it's because it depends on LLVM. And what's interesting, and what's interesting about TinyGo, as Randy just mentioned, is we have a YZP2 target. So just changing YZP1 to YZP2 here allows you to 
compile this same Go program into a component and run in Wasm time runtime. And you should produce the same wheat package. That's pretty cool. All right, second demo. I'm going to. Where was Wasm? I saw a bunch of. Uh, in both cases, it was hidden by the Go invitation and the Tiny Go invitation. So it's like in the main file you're yeah. invoking. With? Okay. Yeah. Thank yep. you. Tiny Go run and both and Go run Strong will Wasm. execute an emulator to run the Wasm file, which in this case is Wasm time. Cool. All right. Second example. I'm going to show you a more complicated Go program, and it's called Y0. Y0 is a zero dependency. Wasm runtime. So Wasm itself is a runtime. I'm going to show you compile the Wasm runtime into YZP1, into YZP2, and run it in Wasm time. So this is kind of like the <laughs> inception, running a Wasm runtime in a Wasm runtime for a Wasm module. All right, let's do it. Tiny go run. Oh, we need to go to the samples. Basic. Um, I'm just quickly going to show you what the Go code looks like. So the Go code looks like there is a. It imports Y0 and YZ snapshot preview one, and embeds the add Wasm, Wasm module into the program and has a main function that creates a new WebAssembly runtime, in this instantiate YZ and instantiate the module and run the module. So this is the Go program that embeds a Y0 runtime that executes a Wasm module. All right. Um, so we can run this with Go run and fitting parameter 7, 9 and print 7 plus 9 is 16. So this is just running in native. Now we can run this as WASP1 and go artist WASM. Boom. So this is already running the runtime as WASP1 module that runs WASP1 module. <laughs> All right, let's do something even more crazy. Tiny go. And this is running, it's combining the Y0 runtime into YZP2 that runs YZP1 modules. And running the whole thing in WASM time. Exactly. And it works. All <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I'm going to enhance this a bit more folks in the back. Is that big enough? All right. So we were working on this today, doing some fun tricks. So what we have here, um, we have a basic WASI HTTP program. It sets up a web server. It runs inside of WASM time with WASM time serve. Um, and it has a handler that just returns an xgo gopher header and then hello world. It's pretty simple. So exit out of that. And so if I go tiny go run target equals yeah. And then Examples, basic. This is using wasm time serve 
defined in wasp to httpjson which is the emulator, and now it is serving HTTP on port 8080. So if I go curl that, I get hello world, and I get the xgo gopher header. And so I can also run proxy, which is a proxy that sends all of its requests to another web server. And so it's running, and so I search, I do slash git, it hits postman-echo.com with a git, and I can also do post requests. And I can send it data, and it'll echo that back. And so this is a particularly interesting program because it's really short. It's one function, HTTP handle func. Uh, it clones the request, sets the, uh, the new host name, and then uses HTTP default client, which the package WASI HTTP is overridden with the WASI HTTP transport. Um, it sends the request, reads back the headers, and then writes everything out uh, to, the, to the client. And that's all it does. And so this is, WASI, WASI HTTP allows like any programmer building HTTP proxy services to run them quickly and easily on a variety of uh, deployment targets. Uh, all right, let's see, one back to demo, all right, cool. All right, so the future, because we wanna talk about this together. All right, so, we're working actively on supporting WASI Preview 2 in mainline Go. So there's a bunch of adjective projects and proposals. You can view them on the, in the Go GitHub project. Um, Go WASM export is done. Um, uh, Go arch equals WASM32, which enables 32-bit pointers all the way down. Um, that's in progress. Uh, relaxed was WebAssembly types, which allows strings, pointers, and other things, actually just landed today. It's in the, it's in the commit queue on big go as of uh, this morning. Um, and then the big one is go OS equals WASI P2. Um, and our hope is that we can use a lot of what we've learned and a lot of what we built for tiny go and put that code directly into the go standard library. And so the code that we used to today to build tiny go should be line for line identical in the standard library in big go. And so we're targeting go 124 for parts of this and go 125 in August of 2025. You can find us in the Gopher Slack channel and as well as Zulu chat in the Bico Alliance. And if you want to contribute, there is the Bico Alliance Go modules, YZHTP Go, and Tiny Go and Go repos. And with that said, thank you so much. We've got a couple minutes for questions if, if anybody has any. Go for it. I'm just curious about the CF library you used to find things with like strings and result types and stuff. Did that exist before? And then I'm also curious, how, how native does it feel in Go? Like when you think in result types, and does it feel like it natively uses strings in Go? That's a great question. Uh, the question is, did the package CM exist uh, before we started this project? And then the second part is, how does it feel to use the package CM? Uh, the answer to the first question is no, we wrote it. Um, Actually, I wrote it, uh, and it was it actually came out of a, of a out of a discussion that happened on the Wit Bindgen repo for C and Rust, and Joe was responsible for writing the original Go uh, bindings generations uh, in Rust, and I looked at that and I wanted to help, but I didn't know Rust, and so I was like, hey, I want to write this in Go instead, um, and the the answer to the second question, which is how does it feel to use. Um, the answer ranges, depending on the types, the answer ranges from pretty good to not great, candidly. Um, and that's because Go doesn't have support for things like tag unions. Um, Go does not have a native sort of like option or result type. 
And so if you actually look at the commit history of the CM package, you'll see a bunch of iterations on, on the ergonomics and the usability and the, the sort of ways that we've tried to improve the usability of those types. And a lot of the work we've done on subsequent libraries, like the WASI HTTP implementation, have really informed how we thought about using that because we've had to use them in practice. And then it turns out a lot of our assumptions about usability were just wrong. Oh, yeah, exactly. It was like, it was a ton. So we're just like constantly pushing patches as we update the ergonomics in package CM. Uh, it's like big patches when we re regenerate the, the TinyGo standard library. Yeah, I can just give an example, the result type. Like in idiomatic Go programs, you want the result type to re return you a value and the arrow. But in the CM, the result the arrow is actually, it's a nested type. So the arrow type can have another result nested in it. So we actually define a result function that returns you a triple a value of a arrow and a east arrow boolean to you know it's a predicate to see if the the, re, the arrow is a, it's not a non empty type. Yeah, we made some decisions to not try to overly shape the generated code interfaces to match Go expectations. I, we instead chose to have them match the WIT ABI like one to one. And so the, the binary layout of the Go types in package CM is bit for bit identical um, to what the canonical ABI specifies. Yep. Uh, so uh, now we spoke about combining existing programs to WebSM, written in Go to WebSM. Mm -hmm. So uh, like Go developers have written, like we have written a bunch of programs where we use Go routines extensively. Uh, when we compile it to WebAssembly, the execution is pretty much single-threaded. So how do you see uh, this, not just now, but as uh, WASI P3 comes into the picture and as the WebAssembly ecosystem evolves with Go, how do you see these kind of programs that heavily use Go routines running? That's a great question. Uh, the question is, as we think about using Go and, and heavy concurrency in Go routines, especially in, in the context of a single-threaded WebAssembly, like runtime, like how do we how do we how are we going to approach that? Is my colleague Luke in the audience? Is Luke here? All right. Shorter answer is we know it's a problem, um, and the the long answer is there are some things coming in WASI 0.3 that we hope will be a much more natural fit for the Go concurrency model, um, such as async and streams, where the runtime will be, we'll implement the runtime in Go to understand the underlying primitives. And then if you have one Go routine blocked on waiting on a request, it won't block any other Go routines and so on. And then you can have a single, if you have all Go routines blocked on IO, they can basically pull and wait uh, for those streams to become available. It's gonna be it's gonna be some kind of shape like that. Uh, there are, oh, sorry, a follow up on that. There are a couple of uh, proposals done, like shared everything, shared, etc. Mm -hmm. Do you see uh, uh, how do you see these impacting you know the go routine execution? Do you see uh, these proposals will have a change in how you know it will potentially work? Yeah, I wish I wish Luke was here, but he would probably point to stack switching and async. APIs as opposed to, to, to threading. And I think that's probably where I think there's gonna be some neat uh, um, simpatica between like WebAssembly and the lightweight concurrency model in Go. Yeah, the proposals I'm looking at is stack switching. I, there are some discussions about how, it's got, how that is gonna impact the Go performance for Go routines, as well as the threading proposal. Any more questions? All right. Oh, wait, one more. I have two questions. Are we able to switch to Go to Cloud for compiling 
If we had time, I would give you a demo because there are stack traces and they do show up when, uh, when you do get a panic uh, today. Um, and again, I think there are, there, are, there are other folks working on like improving the debugability of uh, WebAssembly.